What's up, y'all? <clears throat> Welcome to whatever day it is. It's all rare. Um, today I'm working on this this giant sandworm boss. What's up, D? You hear some clicking? How's it going, man? So, um, this giant sandworm is already more fun with these uh, with this sort of sandiness here in the ground. This sand is like all poison, so if you get hit by the sand, you're poisoned. It's the acid part of it all. Um, and it also it really makes this whole boss fight a lot more interesting because you can't just get there and wail on it, wail on it, like because you gotta watch out for the sand. You're back from vacation. What's up? Welcome back. Welcome back. How's your vacation? So my goal today is to work on the artwork for the for the boss here. Um, the first thing I'm going to start on is the artwork for this sand, um, which is you know it's pretty, it should be a pretty simple thing. This is like a bunch of different sand entities. They're very they're small, and uh, so that should be pretty simple to do that artwork. And then next I'll work on um, the artwork for the actual sandworm part. So you can see I started the artwork for the sandworm, the top of it. Um, but the bottom of him needs some work, and I also need to work on an animation for him, so he looks like he's actually alive rather than just a static entity right now. So there's that's that's pretty much it. That's all I want to do. Lots of beach, pool, hammock, seafood. Right on. I'm actually pretty excited about this boss fight. It is really interesting. It's like no other boss fight so far in the game, and it's, you know, I've always wanted to have a giant sandworm in this game, so. <laughs> Alright, so starting with, um, I'm going to start with the sand. So each one of these, each, there's like, a, I don't know, 16 or so different sand entities right there. Um, probably the first thing I want to do is work on an animation for um, for when the sand appears and when the sand disappears. <laughs> it looks like a giant turd. That's what I said. <laughs> That's totally what I said last time. Yep, it does. Artwork always looks crappy at first. Or at least my artwork. My artwork always looks crappy at first. <laughs> Literally, that was... That was a pun intended, but 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 not intended. Accidentally intended. That was a serendipitous pun. Okay, so I wanted an animation where the sand kind of appears. I'm thinking maybe three frames. I'm gonna save this as. Yeah, I already, you can see I already started putting scales all over it. Yep, see, I started drawing this. This is this is two hours worth of work, just that. Or yeah, no, more like an hour. It took me like an hour just to draw that part. But yep, I will continue drawing that and make it look less like a turd. What's up, Hazard? Of course I'm still alive. What you mean by that? If I've been missing, if I've been missing on your stream, I've been streaming five days a week. So okay, this will be sand burst uh, appear. Okay, so let's see. It starts off kind of like. This is the heat. this hue saturation lets you know it's poison, makes it kind of green. So we'll start with something like this. Oh, you keep missing? Silton, boo! What's up, man? Okay, so for this sand, this little sand patch, this acid sand, I guess I'll just start with less. Less of it, and then more of it. Let's 
So eventually it comes to be this shape. This is like the ending shape here. What's this? Oh, this is something I drew originally. These I don't need. Got the palette already. Yeah, clear that. You show up, you just get points. But what points? Okay, so this one I'm gonna call, let's see, I'll do four frames. Yeah, I'll start with four frames. This is three, this is two. Working backwards, taking off like a about a quarter of this sand at a time. Nothing much, playing some Fallout 4, going camping, nice. You got a concept? You can't code? You can't code yet. Very much enjoy some help with this thing. It's for a 3D game. And I'm 16. Have you thought about maybe finding a programmer or maybe learning some programming yourself? Oh, it's your birthday. Your birthday was recent. Happy birthday, man. Happy 16. So we got one, two, three frames. This will be frame four. I guess it'll be five frames. You're just gonna wait till college? All right. All right, so zero, this is, um, okay, we got all the frames we need. We don't need that frame. And let's see, this starts off. Welcome, is that the Rose TV? So it gets up to about 50% total and we've got five frames, so that's 10% each. Whoops. Whoops. Okay, hopefully that looks right in the game. Let's see. Sandburst appear. I think I put my sandburst art there. Yeah, common. All right, so we got common. Simbers appear. Let's get that crunching that out. Acid boss, Sambers. Here we go. So initial is when it appears. So this is going to become a Sambers appear. And this is a pretty quick animation. 
And then release is going to be Sanders appear in reverse. Also a quick animation, maybe a little slower. And then so yeah, when it, when we initially start up this the Sandburst AI, it um, runs this initial animation, sets a timer for itself, and then the release anim. So we need to know how long the release is. If it's five frames, they're both they're all point one, then that's gonna be timers less than point five. Go to mode nine. Do the sound sand. Shrink the children. We don't have any children. We'll comment that out. Animate release and then delay animate. Okay. So see if it looks right. Basically, it should look like the sand is becoming green and and oh yeah oh yeah that's cool. that's kind, of, kind of works. It's maybe a bit too fast though. I'm trying sandburst appear a little slower. It's, it's got, it's flashing one frame. Yeah, this is a bus, yep. Sandburst, um, okay, so we'll do a peer zero for the first frame, idle. And then idle running. I don't know. I don't know what to call this. Delay 0 0.2, Sandburst, number sign. Riddle me this. How come it doesn't choke on the sand if it's always depicted with this mouth open? <laughs> Maybe it eats the sand and then poops it right back out. Just like a worm. It's got the most efficient digestive system ever. Eats and poops right then, right there. But am skin running, not running like running, but running like running. I think that's better. center one down a little bit. It's like a sea cucumber or a paired fish. Yes. And then a poop sand. Ah, well, yes, it's, there is already that plan. So, um, there's going to be another attack where he comes down and hangs down from the ceiling and he spits acid sand at you. So there, we've kind of explained it, huh?
I'm thinking it could use a few more frames, actually. Or maybe one, nah. Yeah, yeah, maybe these are, no, actually, maybe this, these are just, like, transparent. So, maybe that's 30%. This is, like, 50%. This one's like 70%. And this one's 90. Does it have a name? No, it does not yet. Please feel free to name. Although I, I, to be honest, I am going to name it according to the theme for the game. So, but we can have a, t you can temporarily name it. How about that? And I did name, I did name that one guy a Skyburn or whatever you, whatever it was you. What was that name you came up with? Or the Ice Dragon? Not a Skyburn. The Shivern, that's right. The Shivern. You officially named that guy for sure. Okay, so how does that look with it fading in the sand a little bit? Oh, yuck, what happened there? What happened? Oh, it might have gone back to its first frame. Yep, I did. The Shivern, sweet name. Oh, that does look better. He should he should do his like uh, shake down one. See, he's like less than ten, maybe. Kind of starts a little bit before he hits the ground. Maybe because of that. Negative 10, 10. This one's negative 240. This one's negative 240. Okay, I think that might have fixed it. Can't think of a pun? What? Zilton turned 16 and can't think of a pun now? What's what's up, man? What's up? What's going on? Huh? This isn't like you. OK, 
Okay, the sand bursts in the middle. Like, um, I think they're at negative. Yeah, here they are, negative four, zero. Both of these, I'm thinking they should be like negative six and negative four, just down a little lower. Oh yeah, that looks better. Okay. Mahatma Sandhi? <laughs> that's, that's, um, it's pretty funny. Um, next up, the sand is lasting a little bit too long. So I'm going to try taking down its lifetime a little bit. two point six all right next up I'm gonna make the art for when it's actually running look better so the sand burst um, oops this is the regular sand burst so maybe it has like three or four frames. This is kind of like stretching it out a little. Okay, let's get rid of that and that and this. I'm going to get rid of Well, yeah, I'll get rid of that frame later. Okay, I'm going to start with just stretching it out a bit.
Chasset. What's up, Chasset? How's it going? Waves, waves, welcome. I'm just working on a giant sandworm today. This is kind of what he looks like so far. He looks like a giant dookie. Um, literally. But yeah, we're working on the artwork to make him look better. Better, better, better. This is only a day or so in the making him, so, you know, give him three or four days, he'll be awesome. So this is the concept, he's got like this attack where he comes up from out of the ground and the ground turns to acid, so you get poisoned if you touch this ground. When he's, when he's like, out of the ground, coming out of the ground, all that. Then he spawns all these little Zerub guys and burrow and go crazy. And then he has one more attack where he can hang from the ceiling and spit acid on you. Yeah, so it'll, it'll get better. It'll get better. So I'm working on the actual artwork for the sand right now. Little patches of sand that they poison you, acid you. So yeah, how's it going with you? What's up? Okay, so this should add up to be kind of a subtle effect. Blip, blip. I need one more little thing though. Yeah, sweet. No, no problem. Hosting me. Thank you for hosting me. Nice. Thanks for sharing too. Oh, I really appreciate that. Seriously. I mean, I need all the help I can get. So thank you. I really appreciate that so much. It's, uh, it's not easy being a solo developer, but it is very rewarding being a solo developer. So it's little things like that that make it so rewarding. It's like people like yourself and others want to help out. It's so cool. It's so cool to feel. I feel it's very encouraging and it's very, um, what's the other word? I don't know. I'm just very appreciative. So thank you. Thank you, Chasset. Thank you. Yeah, nice. Yeah, I try and get at least like two videos in on Twitter a week to just like really good ones. Whatever's coming up, whatever whatever I'm working on and stuff. And then you know I'll post to I'll post everywhere else too. I post to YouTube twice a day practically, and then <clears throat> here on Twitch five days a week or so. It's it's like it's not very difficult actually to do your own marketing as a developer. You can totally pull it off. As a solo developer, it's really not that it's not really not that difficult to like do all your own marketing. I mean, all your own marketing in the sense that people are helping me like yourself. But yeah, as far as like daily habits go, if anybody's out there like wondering how to market your own game, it's really not that hard. Just make sure you're doing something every day that promotes your game a little bit, that gets people aware about your game. Share your game from day one. Don't be embarrassed of your most of your crappy artwork at first, your artwork will get better. And pe when people see that your artwork is crappy, that makes them trust you more. Because they're like, oh, this guy's real. This guy draws crappy artwork at first, too. So don't be afraid to share your stuff. 
Don't be afraid. Share it. Share it. The world will love you. I promise. Just keep making it better. That's my two cents on marketing. <clears throat> okay, so we got this frame. It like stretches up a little bit. Yeah, that's kind of the effect I was wanting to go for. Okay, so we got frame zero. Frame one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Eves, what's up? Yeah, it has been a long time. How you been, man? Bleep, 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 bleep. Always helps to make sound effects when you're making art. Art is the easiest, most funnest part of game development and music. Art and music are so easy and fun. Programming is hard. Programming takes a lot of time. Okay, so stretch this one a little bit, stretch that one a little bit. Oh, yeah. I like the way this one's turning out. Okay, so let's see the next one. Four, was it? And number five, look at number five. Five by five. Whoops. There's frame two, one, zero. Blah. You launched your second Android game? Oh, it sucked. Now you're going for the real project? All right, cool, man. Good for you. How about me? Um, yeah, it's going great. Development for Songbringer is... It's gone... This game has gone better than any other game I've ever made. And I think... I always try and share this on the streams, but the, I think the really thing that, that helped the most was... Um, you know, I recognize that there's a lot of risk in, in game development. You're risking your time, right? So the thing that helped the most was doing a Kickstarter and, and being true in, ah, what is the thing that helped the most? I don't know. It just really put me on track to think of things this way. I thought, what would I do if I were, what kind of game would I make if I would, if I were to only make one more game in my entire life. And that's how Songbringer came about. I was like, okay, this is the game I would make. If I, if I could only make one more video game in my entire life, I would make something like this, like a sci-fi style Zelda thing. So maybe that helps, maybe it doesn't. What's up, Elite SCV? Welcome, welcome. Okay, so let's go for frame. Three. Select, load selection.
So I'm working on this little, um, this is kind of a sub enemy. This little patch of sand here is actually kind of an enemy um, for the sandworm boss. The sandworm boss, when he comes out of the ground, he's got all this like acid sand. This He's like poisoning the sand around him. And that's what this stuff is. It's like poison sand. I think this is gonna be the last frame here. Is that that drop three? Okay, yeah, drop three's over here. Last but not least, drop number five. All right, now we got four frames and I can animate it going up and down and getting more acidic green, less acidic green. So I'm starting with frame zero and hue saturation 50 and it should work up to like 100. We'll go 60 there. Seventy here. Oh wait, this needs to be a hundred. It's hundred there. I guess fifty to eighty is good there. Okay. So we can duplicate this frame, throw it there. Just kind of repeating this whole process in reverse. Although we could, ah yeah, that's good. Wait a minute, why is it? Oh, I put too many frames there. Right? Being game dev is easy. Being satisfied is hard. It is. It is. It's a difficult thing, but being satisfied is kind of the ultimate reward, right? I mean, you can get rewarded financially from your game doing well, but if you're not satisfied, that's, you know, what's the, what's the point? Being, being financially rewarded for your game is a difficult thing, too. Salad dogs. Oh, yo. Oh, yo. Oh, oh. What's new, Salad dogs? What you working on now? I think I'm going to do one more frame in this animation. One tippy top frame. Tippy tippy top. Tippy tippy top. Tippy tippy top. So this one will be a hundred and this one will be like 
90. This one's a 90. Still working on render, sprite batching. Being lazy. Good for you, man. Good for you being lazy. It's important to be lazy sometimes. Teak, so yeah, how's it going with you, man? Work on making your game fancy. Currently trying to display random maps in the background of menus. Cool. But with movement, right? Nice. Nice. Little animated background. Okay, I don't... Let's see how this looks. Let's see how this looks. I hope this looks good, but it might not. We'll see. Sandburst. Uh, yeah, I gotta get disciplined again. Hear ya. I totally hear ya. One thing that's really helped me being disciplined with this game is doing live streams. I mean, it was it was hard at first to learn how to like talk and code, but but doing live streams really keeps me motivated. You know, I'm like, when Monday rolls around, and I'm like, what should I do this week? I always feel that like that need to have something kind of to be working on on the live stream. So it's really helped me stay focused with this project long term. Pretty good now. Nice. Maybe your animation should be a little faster. Swarmodian Explorer. So cool. I'm excited you have a map editor built in there too. Right on. So you're going to be animating that background and stuff. Initial running, oh, that's because it's point 0.2. It should at least be point 0.1. Slowing down time to watch this. Yeah, that is totally gonna work. So each one of those, each one of those little patches of sand is its own AI. Yeah, it does not look too bad. Maybe it should have less of those yellow spots. No, I mean, it's fine. It's fine. Actually, maybe it should be a little less green for this animation. Oh, so your new one's gonna load a map and show it. Cool. It's like an attract mode. It's like an arcade attract mode. So we got how many frames? One, two, three, four. Four frames of getting there. So maybe this should be 20. 20%. This one could be 40. This one. Yeah, 60, 80, this one's 100, this one's 80, 90. Yeah, Eves, that's totally, that's what I'm working on next. This, what you're seeing here is the, Really, really just rough and rough artwork that I did in the first hour of doing the artwork for this worm. That's why it looks like a dookie still. Nice replays. Oh yeah, trust me, this worm is gonna look sick by the time I'm done with it. Ah, that does look a lot better. 
so does it still give the impression that it's interesting? Yeah, it's got, it gets green. It's a green. If you touch it, you get poisoned. Actually, I think it shouldn't poison you when it's being removed. So I'm gonna go ahead and change its category to just shot foe. Actually, no, I'll change it to category none when it's when it's dying. Try trying to hit it right when it's right there. Oh yeah, okay, cool. You can step on that stuff now. It's gone. Okay. Cool. That sandburst turned out really good. A lot better than it was at the beginning of the stream. So let me add the music. What about it? Is it good? Is it bad? Samber Star. What's up, Game Time HQ? Okay, so what I did for this check-in is I, I made the sand burst look a little bit better, so this the worm looks cooler coming out of the ground. I made it so when he go, when he hits the ground on the way back down, it's a little earlier. Um, and then I added all these animations to the sand burst so they look really good as they as they appear and also as they disappear. And then that's it. Sand bursts. Oh, you like it? Nice. Hello. Hello. Yo, what's up, professional novice? Yo. Howdy do. Howdy do. Okay, so this giant worm is... Um, you know what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do to now is I'm gonna start I'm gonna start drawing the rest of his skin armor and stuff like that. You can see I drew all these little pieces of armor that go on his body here, and they're you know little units or whatever. So I can I can easily kind of copy them and, and at least kind of create something pretty quickly. And then I'll do some more shading and stuff like that and make it really good. But before I do that, I want to I want to animate slightly. So I want to take this worm and do say three or four frames and I want to see what it would look like if I animated this entire worm. So what's this one? Acid boss up. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and save this on the desktop. Just a totally temporary file. So I'm going to quickly animate this just to see if this strategy is even going to work. You're diving deep into sea. Pun intended. Nice. My day is going great. It's going really great. I love I love the days where I just get to make art. It's so it's so relaxing. Art and music are just so easy and relaxing. It's like no there's nothing to it. Oh yeah, I gotta you gotta refresh your memory. Can't remember, remember whether my allocator zeroes out requested memory by default. Yeah, the little things like that 
Happens all the time. Happens all the time to me, at least. Okay, so I'm imagining. Okay, I'm gonna just gonna. This is a this is a temporary file. That I saved on my desktop, so I can I'm gonna merge all these layers together and just play with um, making the sandworm. animate slightly actually I'm not going to worry too much about animating the whole thing Oh, well, it's hard to give up Pixelmator. Yeah, I've heard. Why do Why do you want to give up Pixelmator? I've heard Pixelmator is really good. Oh, it'd be hard to leave it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. The price right there. It's a big thing. So does uh, Pixelmator do everything that you want it to do? Or, or is there things that it doesn't do that you wish it did? So if you're just joining the stream right here, I'm doing a this is a I'm doing many passes at drawing this guy. This will probably take me three or four days to completely draw and make this and make this boss look sweet. Um, so the first thing I'm doing here is I'm doing a a, a quick um, animation pass. I'm going to do four frames of an animation of this guy. So I want I'm testing out if this is even going to look good. If I have four frames where he kind of slightly animates, so it just looks more alive. Oh, so for app design, basic graphic design does everything you need. Nice. Yeah, I know. Supporting Adobe is kind of like, right? I, I feel you there. Okay, so there's one frame. Do one more frame. Just gonna keep doing the same same kind of thing here. Same rotation.
Yeah, it is a huge catch-all program. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The cloud stuff you do pay monthly. Yeah, I know. I don't really like the pricing model either. I mean, it, on one hand, it kind of makes it more accessible for for people that it's only like 30 bucks a month or whatever, as opposed to $600 or something. But yeah, the subscription model is kind of, I don't know. You stop paying, you can't use it anymore. It's kind of like, it's kind of like once you start, you can't stop. So it's like it becomes addictive or whatever to stay with them. It's starting to look really ugly, but that's, uh, that doesn't matter. <clears throat> oh, that's a good point, salad dongs, right? Why, why is there a game engine in Blender? Is there really a game engine in Blender? Yo, free, dude, professional novice, you won the most free parking points that anyone has won, I think, in a week. Right, no, oh, it's such a good point, Saladongs. Really? I never knew Blender had a game engine, that's crazy. Blender should just make an LS. <laughs> Good point, Island Snake. Feature creep. Freaking feature creep. Dude, the feature creep I hate the most is the feature creep on phones. Why do we need so many features on our freaking phones? We don't need... We don't need half the stuff that iOS has added in the last... Three, four versions. You got your first 3D printer? Whoa. <laughs> uh -uh. Yeah. Wait, Ubuntu made a made a mobile OS promise? I didn't know that. Benko, what's up, Benko? We're on, we're on. Game on. Okay, phase four of test animation. Almost done. So I can test this and see if this is gonna work. See if it's going to be all right to have four frames that this giant worm animates through as he's doing his wormy stuff. <laughs> this is going to be a horrible animation, but we'll, we'll like it once again, once again, this is just a test. Wow, they tried to ship Ubuntu Mobile. Whoa. 2D game in Blender. He's implementing a sprite animation, putting different frames of animation on different sides of a cube and rotating the cube to change frames. Oh my god. That sounds really complicated. Yeah, that would... That would be... That, if that's how you have to do it, 
I don't know if I would use Wonder Engine. I mean, on one hand, it's kind of a creative idea, but it just sounds too complicated. Okay, like I said, it looks like crap, but let's see what it looks like in the game. <laughs> Jesus. Obviously, the first thing I'm learning from doing this test animation is that it doesn't need to rotate this much. You know, it, I rotated it maybe like a pixel or two each frame or whatever it felt like, but that turned out to be too much rotation. So, lesson learned there. But let's see what this looks like in the game. Acid Boss, this is going to go in the backgrounds folder. Yeah, I kind of hope he didn't either. Yeah, right? Yeah, just change the texture. Yeah. So this is part of the Acid Bosses idle animation. Yeah, oh, I mean, even though that's such a crappy animation, it at least gives him some life. So yeah, that will, that's that's what I'm going to do. This test animation is a success. I'm thinking, I'm thinking first I'll draw the entire sandworm and make it look really good with one frame. And then the next thing I'll do is make, you know, draw four, basically about four frames. I think, yeah, four frames is going to be a lot just itself. It's how big this is what this boss is, but yeah, this will work. So, four frame animation will do it. Actually, it'll turn out to be more like a six frame animation, but there really will only be four different visual frames. Okay, so um, that test is a good, so I can close this file and go back and start working on the actual Acid Boss's artwork. Pokey Brothers, yes, I'm creating a game. Welcome to the stream. So, I'll copy that armor. Downward. Ba 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 ba. So first, I'm just throwing in a bunch of these like um these like armor frames here, and then I'll I'll make each frame unique, and you know the whole animation will kind of gel and stuff, moment by moment. Yeah, so this won't end up looking like this completely at the end. I'm not just going to copy and paste the whole thing. I'm just throwing it all in place at first to um to give it kind of an overall look and then and then tweak it all make it all unique every one of these little plates of armor is going to be unique
Is this the first game I created? No, this is not the first game I created. I've been creating games for about 20 years now, man. I started in 1994 making video games. Um, yeah, this is now my 20, 22nd year, 22nd year making video games. This is, I think this is about the fifth or sixth video game I've worked on. No, wait. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh shit, this is the twelfth video game I've made. Holy crap. Holy crap! Not all of them are like long video games and stuff. No, some of them I worked in teams. Most of them, actually all of them I worked in teams. This is the first video game I've ever created solo. Yo, Arcane! What's up, buddy? Where is the sandworm going to be used? In the, in the sand dungeon. In the acid dungeon. Let me show you what it's like so far. This is a rough sketch. Rough sketch version of this boss. So he's got this acid sand. So whenever he goes into or out of the sand, it creates acid. So if you get if you touch the acid, if you touch the acid sand, you get poisoned, and that does damage over time. So the trick to beating this guy is you have to like you have to be able to hit him a bunch of times. He's like got a lot of hit points, right? So you got to kind of get close, but not too close. Um, and then he's also gonna have one more attack where he um, where he can hang down from the ceiling and spit bunches of acid on you. So, and then other than that, he can also spawn a bunch of these sort of guys a little far away. So, this is only day two of doing the artwork for him, so there's a lot of work left to do with the artwork. And since he's so big, I mean, it's, and getting every little, you know, like, every little piece of his armor finished is going to take a bit of time. That's what this guy is. Giant sandworm. Like, the trick is if you can bomb him successfully, you gotta nail the timing down just right, though. I think it's about right when he leaves the screen to set a bomb down. Yeah, I got him. And then right after he's left the screen, you can set another bomb down. Oh, that almost got him. Kind of depends on where he, where he surfaces and stuff. Should be a pretty difficult boss fight, though. Compared to... I mean, it's, it's also a different boss fight than most other boss fights, because, like... He's coming up out of the ground and you have no idea where he's going to appear every time. So there's that. Same with the little burrowing zero guys. You have no idea where, they're, where they are about to appear. So it's kind of dangerous. Alright, so yep. Back working on the artwork. Once again, I'm just throwing these, um, these armor plates together quickly. And then later I'll go back and customize each individual piece of armor plating. Nice, Bucky.
as you can see, these armor plates have gotten really all messed up because of how many times they've been copied, pasted, rotated. So all the more incentive to make each um, you know piece of armor unique because they look like crap right now. <laughs> kind of makes it easy though. When something looks like crap, you go like, oh, I gotta go in and make it better. Why did I not put it on Steam Early Access? Is there any reason? Yes, there's a big reason. A huge reason. Um, it's a kind of a big question to ask there. It's kind of a big topic, but um, I can try and summarize. Um, basically, when you go into Early Access, it's not as, it's not very good for players. Um, well, no, this, you know, this totally depends. This totally depends. You know, certain games... Early access is the perfect thing for certain games, especially multiplayer games and any other game where there's like infinite replay value. Um, with Songbringer, it has a lot of replay value in the sense that it's a procedurally generated game, so it can change every time you play it. But still, it's going to be the same story every time you play it. So think about it. There's a lot of people out there that are waiting to play Songbringer because they want it to be the complete game. They don't want to play half a game. They don't want to play half of Songbringer because there's a lot of story. There's a lot of things going on in the game that you're really only going to be able to experience once. You know, even though you can keep playing it again and again and again, you can do you can do speed runs, you can do all other kind of things. You can the world changes every time. Still, there's parts of it that you really want to experience for the first time in its complete state. So for some game, some games, early access is perfect. For Songbringer, it could almost work. But, but no, the best thing, I, I, I believe, the best thing for Songbringer is to release it when it's finished and it's complete and it's, it's meant to be played at that time. Um, and also, and other big reasons why not to go with Steam Early Access. Huge reasons. Number one, you only get one shot at Steam. So when you put your game on Steam, you put it up on Early Access, that's your, you've just blown your load. Seriously. You now have once you once you launch your game on Steam, you now have about six hours to get on their top page, or else you literally fall off their radar forever. That's it. You you launch your game once on early access, you're never gonna get a second launch on Steam, at least. Um, you can you know build up your own grassroots following and kind of do a second launch or whatever yourself. And for some games and some people that works well. But as far as Steam goes, you you are not new. You are not news anymore. You're not a new game anymore. So the be actually the best thing for most game for for a game like Songbringer is to release it when it's ready. Release it when it's totally finished and it's awesome. And it's polished. And um, what are, what's another big reason? I mean, those are those are the two big reasons. Does that help? Does that kind of explain it? Yeah, see, Arcane brings up another point. He hates early access. Everything comes too early and unfinished, and you're paying for an unfinished product, which may never get finished. Totally. That's that's the point I, that I, I forgot to mention, is that people people are, are wary of early access at this point. You know, some people have really kind of ruined early access in a way, ruined the image of early access. By by not finishing their games or 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 just like putting their game on early access too soon, you know, early access works really well for like multiplayer games, real time strategy games, things like that 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 you're gonna get a lot of replay value out of. Yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. No problem, man.
hmm, I think I changed my mind. I want this, I want his tail to be a little different. Oh, yeah, filled with online multiplayer zombie survival games. <laughs> yeah, it's the truth. So I'm gonna draw some giant horns coming out of the coming out and out of his rear end here. Drawing some artwork for a giant worm boss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So easy and fun. Okay, kind of getting there. Next I'll do this left row of armor. Which I believe starts with uh, that one. Oh yeah, this one. Okay, away we go. Is there a guarantee to get the first page of Steam when you just launched the game? No, there's no guarantee. It's kind of like App Store. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just like that. It's kind of like that, where if you don't get thousands of downloads and tons of attention in the first X hours, you are basically, you're off their radar. You're lost. That's it's kind of how Steam works, as far as far as far as I understand. I have not actually launched a game on Steam, so I could be totally wrong about this, but from everything everybody's ever told me, that's pretty much how it works. It's not as bad as the App Store. I don't know I don't know about Google Play Store, but I know the App Store is freaking horrible as far as how they work. It's it sucks. It sucks trying to trying to get a win 
as far as your um, as far as your own creation goes, you know, making your own games and trying to trying to publish them yourself on the app store is ridiculous. It's it's not very cool how they work. Um, but and and worse worse of all, worst thing of all, you can't even track your um, you can't even track your analytics. They don't, they don't give you a single analytic on the freaking app store. You can't tell how many people have looked at your app store page. Your, you know what I mean? Which would be critical information if you could tell how many people looked at your app store page versus bought your game. You could at least determine, you know, a conversion ratio that your app store page has, is has without the information of how many people see your page you're totally blind you have no idea if changing the text on your your app store page or the icon for your app store page or whatever you have no idea if that's helping and but what on steam at least steam gives you you have analytics so thank god you can put up you basically can put up your own google um analytics code or whatever One gripe I have about the App Store, and I know that is a gripe that is shared amongst many other developers. I don't know why Apple is so... God. Private. Why are, why, are they, why are they not sharing... Why are they not sharing page views with their developers? The people that are trying to make them money. You know, it's like, what the hell? Why are you, why are you guys... Is this some legal issue for you you can't you can't you can't share a simple statistic how many people looked at a page to privately to the developer that's trying to trying to make more money with that page it would make you more money too it doesn't make any sense to me but maybe maybe apple has their reasons i don't know but if there's any apple people out there listening to this please freaking get it together Do you want the app store to be flooded with junk? Give people the tools they need to make their stuff better. Information. Cookie Brothers. Oh, Zuljin's playing again? Nice. Oh, or are you talking about Zuljin playing a while ago? Yeah. I think you're talking about Zuljin's playing played a while ago. Yeah, there's a lot of YouTubers that are that are lined up, kind of waiting to play Songbringer, but I'm I'm waiting until the game is more complete because because of exactly what I saw from Zuljin playing it. I'm like Zuljin had you know it seemed like he had a good time, but he played an alpha version. He played it so long ago that like it's changed so much since then, and he didn't really get he didn't really get the good experience of the game. So. Next time I, I share it with a big YouTuber, I'm going to make sure they, they get it when it's, when it's more done. Really? Google handles it even worse? Oh, they do. Oh, so they do have at least metrics. Nice. Thanks for sharing that, Google Hand. You can run tests against different random samples of your customers. Whoa, you can A-B test? Dude, you can A-B test on the Google? That's awesome. See, that's what we're, that's what I'm talking about. That that's something that's a, that's a nice tool. Thank you, Google. God. <laughs> and yes, Apple better get, better step up their game. Seriously. Are they just floating in a world of making so much cash from some I think that's probably what's happening. They're making so much cash from a, a select few developers that they don't really care about the thousands of developers that are struggling. You know, that's why they give they give a lot of personal attention to some games and they don't to thousands of other games.
walled garden thing? What's it? What do you mean by walled garden? Secret garden, like the movie, like the book. They'll even construct charts to show how different users progress. Sweet. Uh huh. Right on. Yeah. Yeah, they obviously haven't. They should be though. Games are a, how many how many billion dollar industry are games now? It's more than movies, right? Aren't games are making more than movies? Pretty sure. Hail corporate. <laughs> Wall garden, you want to sell a mobile app, you have to sell it through the app store. Oh, that kind of wall garden. Okay. Regathian, what's up? Oh, yeah, Microsoft has that too. Mm hmm. Yeah, I know. Android can be kind of hard that way. Um. Who makes more money, Hollywood or the video game industry? I want a current article. These are 2012, 2013. I want 2016. This is, this is written May 3rd. Well, yeah, games also good. Hmm. Well, okay, so it's a it's a it's a toss up. Some people say it's they're bigger. Some people say they're not. But they're definitely freaking close. If the top game is making 2.2 .2 billion dollars and the top movie is making 2.7 billion dollars, so not very, not very far apart. Rocket Bunny, what's up, Rocket Bunny? Yeah, Android Dev Studio. No, oh, right, yeah. 4.7% of your users can can see this, can do this new feature thing. You happy about that? Huh? Happy? Happy developer? Okay, this is totally rough. But at least he's kind of complete now. Let's see what this looks like. Oh, good point. Yeah, Minecraft did get sold for more than 2.2. .2. Yeah, he's starting to look good, right? <laughs> at a distance. If you zoom out, he looks good. Um, let's remove these. At least now he probably won't look as much like a giant dookie with that with that cr creamy tail. Yeah, okay. He's going to look good once it's all said and done and so you can tell he still looks like a dookie going down. But yeah, once it's all said and done, there'll be four frames of animation. Keep 
on keeping on. Start drawing this guy for real. Okay, I'm gonna check in what I did so far. Hmm. I'm wondering if I should put this all into one layer. Probably should. Bizarre? What happened? What happened? Should I put it all into one layer? Probably. I think I'll draw this background first. The skin armor. Oh, it's flashing red and green. Christmas vision! What? Pragma once is not working? What are you, what are you, um, what compiler are you using, Rocket Bunny? Pragma once should work, as long as you have C11. Or C11, or what's, is there a C11? What language are you using? Oh yeah, Visual C++ definitely supports Pragma once. Um, maybe you have to def maybe you have to turn on some kind of switch or something in Visual C++ to get it to start compiling in um, C++ 11 mode or something. I'm not a big Visual C++ expert here, so maybe somebody else knows. Or maybe there's something, some instructions online how to enable it. So now the detailed part of this animation begins. This is going to take quite a while. I'll be drawing this um, this armor here in the middle and his his edge of his, of his armor for hours, hours and hours today. But it's all very simple. And then once he's all said and done, I can kind of like draw, um, uh, some shading. I could do some more actual shading to make him look more 3D. Uh, why don't I do that? Because it's actually faster for me personally to work on one layer. That's why I'm considering making this entire thing one layer. Um, what happens when I start to work with more layers? I get really confused and like I'm like, wait, what? What layer was that? And then I draw on the wrong layer, and it ends up costing me a lot of time to draw things on too many layers. 
sometimes you know you need a few layers to kind of separate things out but like this little shading right here this little shading is much is at least for me it's much better to put it on one layer See, I just drew all that on the wrong layer. <laughs> God damn. I hate it when that happens. See, so, yeah, I'm thinking I should probably just re just kind of merge it all this down. Or at least merge all his armor into one layer, his background into one layer. And his teeth into one layer. Yeah, that would that would be good. And then if I need to, I can always. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I'm gonna play with the the armor a little bit, and <laughs> definitely compile it down to one layer because this is this is too this is unmanageable at this point. You need help picking languages. Can't decide between C++ or Java. What are you leaning towards, man? Yep, yep. What uh what's your what's the source of your why why um why are you having trouble deciding? What is it that you what is it that's stopping you from just making the choice right now and, and forgetting about one language and sticking with one language? Okay, I'm gonna do this. I'm doing it. Oh, I'm gonna combine. I'm just combining all these layers of armor. Merge group. Boom. Done. Ah, oh, there. So much better. <laughs> that was kind of hard to do, but it, it was necessary, or else this shit's gonna get complicated fast. So Ragabuddy, tell us more about your dilemma, man. Why, what's your choice? What are your... What are you thinking, man? Correct. There is no garbage collection in C++. Yeah, it's a garbage collection free language. You either like that or you don't. Personally, I like it. It's funny how Photoshop eats up a ton of CPU whenever you're whenever I'm using the pencil tool or the brush tool.
Yeah, totally. You and I, Sal Dongs, are of this. We both have, I think we both have similar programming styles and opinions. Oh, totally. Yeah, it's a lot less of a pain than it used to be with C11, that's for sure. And heck, I mean, if you, if you design your memory management the way you want, you really don't even have to, you know, you don't even really have to, like, use C++'s kind of way of doing things. You can, you can manage your own memory, like Saladong's is. Yeah, that's that's probably one of the biggest things that kind of sucks about C++ is you still have to use headers. Headers are just an archaic concept that's supposedly better for compilers, but that's kind of BS because compilers can do it these days where they don't need headers. Yeah, you prefer C over C++? Nice. I'm getting there. I'm kind of getting to the point where I could go back to C. Yeah, or, yeah, you're right. Overloads. It would be hard to leave, live without overloads. And sometimes you do need to create a class. You know, it's like, ah, uh, this, this would be best expressed with the class. Yeah, C sharp. I've heard C sharp's awesome. I have I haven't really used C sharp much. I mean, I've done a few Unity projects, but um, C sharp's definitely got some really solid concepts. You know, no headers. <laughs> you had me at no headers. It's like what? You have no headers? That's perfect. I hate headers. Right? C plus plus coded in a C style. Yeah. We lost Rocket Bunny. Oh, there he is. I like the amount of control in C++. Yeah, that's like, yeah, that's the one thing about C, the C sharp is the speed for for really. That's really only when you do really, really stuff that really needs to be really speedy, but yeah. C++ wins in that regard. C wins over C++ in that regard, actually. Assembly wins over C, though. Does anybody still code in pure assembly? There was somebody on the stream the other day that does. I'm like, whoa, you code in assembly? That's amazing. Isn't C++ halfway between procedural and object oriented? Yeah, it depends on how you use it, totally. If you're using it as an object oriented thing, then it is totally object oriented. But if you're using it in a in a struct like procedural style way, then it's it's yeah, it's whatever you want it to be kind of. It has it certainly has the ability to be object oriented. And there's there's right ways and wrong ways to use the object orientedness. Not right ways and wrong ways, but just I guess, you know. I don't know. It's hard to explain. Some people argue C plus plus is a true OOP language. 
Oh, you mean like small talk and all that or whatever? Yeah, I'm sure it is, right? Embedded systems. That's probably who that, that one guy was. What was that talking about how they did? They work in assembly every day. Orangia, yes, it's a giant worm. Let's see how it's looking, actually. Yeah, totally right. It's not it's not every day that you really need this the performance of C++, but it does help. It's definitely helped with this project. You know, like for example, world creation. Um, this creates an entire procedural world in like 500 milliseconds. And I know for a fact that would, would not be possible in C Sharp to do it that fast. Like worlds would take one and a half seconds or whatever to create, or something like that. You know, like maybe just a second or whatever to create the same kind of song for your world in C Sharp. But if you, if you have to, if you're in a situation where you have to create like say 10 worlds in a row, like that does happen in Songbringer sometimes, if like there's a world scene with a bad, you just can't create the world or whatever, you would need to create like 10 worlds in a row, and so in that case, C Sharp I mean, would not really cut it for this game. So I'm glad, I'm glad to be using C++, C++ at this point, but I would certainly prefer Jai. I really can't wait for Jonathan Blow. Assembly? Not much. I can't say I really have ever coded. I've never coded an entire project in Assembly, but I have coded small snippets of stuff in Assembly. Back in the 90s, you had to you, you had to do that. There were times where you know you still today there are, there are definite uses for coding in Assembly. <clears throat> yeah, it's pretty rare on modern PCs. Raise your tonger. <laughs> yeah, at first, at first, this guy did look like a giant dookie. So I'm, gl I'm glad he's starting to look less like a dookie. But yeah, this guy has no arms. <laughs> I don't have any arms. I don't have any arms. Uh. Yeah, it does build up, doesn't it? Totally. Ugh. I know, it totally should, right? A web page that takes a second to render. Yeah, yeah, right? You can get very close, yeah. C Sharp, yeah, I don't know enough about C Sharp to really comment too much, but... Um, yeah, because I've never I've never really tried to code the same thing in in C plus plus and C sharp, so I, I don't really I can't really speak from experience on how much performance it would have actually saved. You know, I guess it really kind of depends on how you code things too. Whether whether how many how many functions are being called before you get to the point where you are. You know, C sharp does C sharp have a stack? Does it do stack memory kind of like how C C++ does it? So when you go into a function, it pushes back the stack pointer, or pushes back the pointer to the previous function and the pointer to the pointer to all your or all your variables you're going to use in that function. Does it work like that in C++? Or I mean C sharp? SFML or GLFW? I don't know. I guess I would choose GLFW, but I really don't have any experience with SFML. <laughs> really? Chromium does that? 12,000 strings?
Yeah, Merengue, I animate sprites in Photoshop. I do all my artwork in Photoshop. Um, just to keep it simple for myself, you know, it's like, I don't want to have to learn two programs or whatever. So I do, I do as much work as I can in the same program in general. It's kind of like a general life game development thing. Zylaz, what's up, Zylaz? You used assembly when you was in reverse engineering in the late 90s and release, but no. But don't tell anyone. <laughs> All right, I promise. I promise. Yeah. Pro Tito, what's up, man? How's it going? Yeah, A Sprite. I've heard A Sprite's awesome. I would consider switching art software at the end of my project. So, like, if I let's when Songbringer's all finished, I might consider switching to something like A Sprite or whatever, Pixelmator, one of the other ones. Because Photoshop does. We were just talking about this a second ago. Photoshop does have too many features. You know, it's like there's stuff you're, you're, I'm never going to use, particularly the more vectory artwork stuff. You know, I, all I need is pixel artwork. So, okay, now I'm going to start on the armor. I'm going to start making this armor look better, cleaner. Oh, right. Yeah. SFML is more of a game engine. Yeah, totally. I will. I think I'll give a sprite a shot at some point. Just not mid project. Nice, thanks. Yeah, I mean, all I've got so far is kind of this general outline here. Now I'm going to go back and kind of refine the edges. And then once I'm all, it's all said and done, I'll add some more three-dimensional shading and stuff. And then after that, it's just animating it. So I'm, only, I'm planning on doing four frames to animate it to kind of keep it simple. Because if I do any more than four frames, it'll become a huge bitch. It'll be too much art. And too much art's never any fun. Got to keep things reasonable. Or else you go insane! Yeah! So I'm, I'm excited, Saladongs, you're creating at that low level. It's so cool. Yeah. Partially for the sake of control, partially for the learning. Oh, most of the C-sharp overhead comes from bounds checks on arrays and doing invokes to native libraries. So once you use pointers, you don't need to talk to native library. The performance is in the same ballpark. Oh, okay. So there's no extra overhead for like how they push things to the stack and how they, you know, all that. The stack, basically. Are the stacks the same? That's what I'm wondering.
researching how to do some things. Yeah, I'm sure it's painful on Mac. Yeah, it's, they never do, man. They never tell you a lot because it's like they don't want you messing with that stuff. It's like they design. They're they're all they've always been that way, right? Like Apple and their their privacy and control concerns. I don't know what it is about them. Never dabble C plus plus. Nice. So what do you, what do you want to do next, Zylaz? What do you want to what do you want to do next for uh, getting more experience programming? How do you manually create a window in C plus plus? It totally depends on your platform, Rocket Bunny. But I'm pretty sure you're talking about Windows, and in Windows you you call create window x i think is the function still right isn't this what the we what still call so rocket bunny basically on windows you use windows e functions to create stuff and uh, this is the function that creates a window i think this is, this is please somebody correct me if if i'm wrong about this i don't i don't know this is what it used to be 10 years ago but it could be different now how you create a window in C++ on Windows. But let me post you this link. Oh, so there's a byte or two extra on the objects, but other than that, not a big difference. Oh, okay. Oh, unless memory's fragmented, right? In in that case, you got to do their their garbage collection and all that, right? You're doing some tutorials. Start learning through small gaming projects. Nice, nice. I like that, man. Small gaming projects. Yeah. The smaller, the better. The smaller, the scope. Well, it depends on your personality. But for me, at least, learning is better doing smaller projects because I, I tend to scope things too big. I'm like, oh, I like this this RPG style thing I just coded. I'd like to make a whole game about it. And then two freaking years later, you know, so small. If you're if you want to learn, smaller projects are better. If unless you're unless you have a better a different personality where you can just like you know, drop things. I personally, I have a problem dropping things. I can't really like let go of a project that I still am interested in. Kind of a flaw, kind of a, kind of a strength. Oh yeah, create window X. Uh-huh. Oh yeah, nice. You have a lot of free time, but you're easily distracted. You're easily distracted? Well, then you're probably gonna have no problem doing lots of little projects. That's probably the perfect thing for you is to do little projects like that. If you're an easily distracted kind of person, keep your projects real small. In fact, Xylos, here's something that might inspire you. This guy um, that did 100 games, In five years, what's this guy called? This is it. Yeah, James Cox. You should totally check out this article. This guy's name is James Cox. He's a game dev student type or something like that. And his his goal is to create a hundred games in five years. And so you should kind of check out what he's doing because it might give you some inspiration on short little projects you could do 
Because, I mean, to do freaking 100 games in five years, they've all got to be, you know, relatively simple things. Everyone should keep projects real small. Agreed. Yeah, right. 100 games? It's pretty impressive. You should check it out. He's even got a few that are pretty, pretty cool. Like... I tried one of them. Um, this one, an occurrence at Owl Creek Bridge. But yeah, it's quite inspiring to see what he's done. Yeah, Rocket Bunny, it's not it's not it's not too complicated. Oh, and on Linux, on Linux it's like uh it's it's not that hard either. Linux you do um Oh shoot. I'm using Coco Studio X which does GLFW and GLFW handles it, so I'm not sure exactly. Yeah, but on Linux, what do you what do you do on Linux? Oh, you use um on Linux you use X functions. Which are all start you these are the these are the libraries you need to include xlib basically so on Linux if you yeah so for salad dongs and anybody else that's interested um, if you want to do window management on Linux you use xlib basically just look for xlib so and then you use functions like x open display stuff like that those kind of functions to create your Linuxy stuff. Linuxy windows and stuff. Here's one piece of armor that really got away. Got away, it's like, ah, I'm free. Yeah, yeah, X11 still is the, the de facto standard for how you do window management on Linux. Correct me if I'm wrong, anybody out there, but I'm pretty sure that's how you do it still. So. Would you do the 24-hour game challenge to make a game in 24 hours? Uh, no, I wouldn't. Personally, personally, I wouldn't. In, in my the where I'm at in my own career, I guess you could call it, of making games, I definitely wouldn't do something like that because I'm definitely more the kind of person that likes to do long-term projects like this Songbringer. It's a two. And, it's gonna be what a two and a half year project once it's all said and done, maybe. So, and that's quick, you know. Some games people spend five years, ten years, even. Dwarf Fortress, Dwarf Fortress. I think they worked on for like, is it almost twenty years now, or, or is it ten? I don't know. I'm more one of those kind of people. So I'm I'm not the kind of person that does game jams or like twenty four hour things. Um, that's certainly an amazing thing for some people, you know, some people that's like, that's their jam. That's their thing they love to do. That's how they grow. That's how they, how you make friends, how you, um, how you make games, how you learn game, game development and all that. But for me, no, that's not my, not my cup of tea. Yeah, and it is really interesting to see what people can accomplish in those 24 hours. Oh, really? I didn't know Mac used to have a C-based API. Yeah.
Yeah, I'm really slow at making games too. I learned that about myself. I'm like, I am not a fast game developer. I'm not a fast developer in general, but what I do make turns out to be, you know, of a quality level that I'm proud to say I created. So there's that. Can someone please stop the itching? How long have I been streaming for? Thanks, Bapu. Oh, well, we're already to over two hours. Okay, no worries. I'll go for another 15 minutes. I got it in me today. I can do a little longer on this. I might be able to finish this left. Oh, yep, I can at least finish this left side. Oh yeah, next step. Hmm. Ah. Uh, yeah, they committed. They went into they went into Objective C mode, which actually I like Objective C. I think it's pretty cool. I've coded a few games in it, and I um, and an application even. And I I really like the way they did Objective. I think Objective C is like kind of definitely a step up from. Well, it's a higher level language, you know, it's got a, the thing I like most about Objective-C is that it could, um, you can basically safely use and call any object, even a nil object, a null object can be called, you can call any method, yeah, cause you, you can call any method of anything using any object in Objective-C, which is freaking kind of cool. So if, if, you're, if your object you're actually calling doesn't have that method, or or it doesn't have that that member you're looking for or whatever it just returns zero so like you you can, it's everything is kind of safe you don't have to do any kind of pointer checking that part is really neat and then there's a lot of other really neat parts of objective c You like Arc? Oh, I haven't even tried Arc. Yeah. I kind of stopped coding in Objective C right when, right about when Arc was coming out. I was like, it's not cross-platform. I gotta go with the cross-platform engine from now on, and that's when I ch I switched to Coco's 2DX. Never look back. But now I'm looking forward. That's for sure. If there was a if I had a if I had a, the simplicity of Coco's 2DX and like I think I think yeah, there's got to be a there's a there's better engines out there than, than Coco's 2DX. But for my my purposes in this game and stuff like that, Coco CDX is a pretty good choice. Really, um, the cross platform part is is the and the C plus plus part is the cool parts for me in Coco CDX at least. Oh, it causes a crash to your advantage. How do you use that? Do you do you cat do you just capture the um capture any crashes and kind of treat that as your kind of like throwing throw uh exceptions?
Yeah, it's crafted at the hip. Yeah. I mean, they started making Swift for other platforms, but... Or didn't they? Didn't they open source it or whatever? But how many years is it going to take Swift to catch up and be truly cross-platform? Who knows? Might be a minute. Oh, they never, they announced it, but they never did it? Yeah, yeah, totally. If you don't, if you, if you prefer working with an editor, then Coco Studio X is definitely not your thing. I am, I am the opposite. I prefer to work without an editor. In fact, editors really kind of bug me. So that's why I, that's why I love Coco Studio X. Okay, I think it's time to throw this in the game and um Yeah, that's all I'm going to work on today. So I got the left side kind of done. And now next I'll work on the right side and then I'll work on animating and depth and all that kind of stuff. So let's export this and see what it all turned out like for today. Oh, the foundation library too, yeah. Yeah, Songbringer is, is going to be mod friendly. So I don't know whether the community will handle that or the game will actually officially support mods or whatever, I'm not sure. But for sure there will be mods because the whole, the whole game is like totally data driven. So you can kind of... You could right now you can literally go into the data for Songbringer and change everything. If you wanted to change the boss four or whatever to not be as hard, you could do that right now. You could change the artwork, you could change all that kind of stuff. So it's all set up to be modded and modded quite easily. So yeah, I've always kind of had that in mind. I want Songbringer to be able to people to kind of create their own mods for sure. So I don't I'm it's kind of something I kind of it's kind of a detail I kind of have to do after the game's all said and done. I can't really focus on that at this point. But um yeah, for the year after Songbringer is released, I'll, I'll I plan on kind of making it better and better and stuff. And making especially with the mods. So I just write things so that it crashes and burns or does and what that happens that makes a bug. Yeah. Cool. Good philosophy, I like it. Eves, how long do I work a day? Like about eight or ten hours a day. Yeah. So what's great about this guy is he's already kind of fun to fight. He's already got kind of some unique aspects. You can't get too close to him when he's going into the sand or coming out of the sand because he's got this poison sand and stuff. Well, I almost died. I'm cheating, I'm cheating!
I'm pretty excited about this boss fight. This is gonna turn out pretty well. So, yeah, thanks everybody. Have a great night. Have a good one, everybody. It was good seeing y'all, and I appreciate you watching and viewing and stuff. So, see ya.